And now in the same book, number four, ordinarily, we would not need to go over this in Songs for Gathering, it's a song we know well, but thanks to Eric and Louisa, we have Spanish words to sing, which are quite easy, I believe it's seven words. Um, so Eric is going to teach us those words, and then we're going to sing just the Spanish verse. Seven words, shouldn't be too hard. And most of you know the word bienvenidos, welcome in Spanish. And the translation is um, roughly um, welcome, or all will be welcome, simply, and hallelujah. So we say, and I must say also, we have a new, a, a new appreciation of the difficulty of translating from one language to another because you have to have the uh, uh, relatively accurate translation and also with the rhythm of the words and the rhythm of the music, you gotta get them to coincide, so not always easy. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos. A la mesa. A la mesa. So, bienvenidos a, bienvenidos a la mesa. And then the words, todos serán. Todos serán. Okay. So, bienvenidos a la mesa, todos serán. Alleluia, which is the same word, isn't it? Okay. Thank you, Eric. So let's give it a try, just the Spanish words. Now, if you would turn back to your Blue Hymnal of Worship book to number 125, 125. This is a song that I believe we don't sing very often. Um, and so we're going to sing it today. It's a song of praise to the Trinity, to God, to Jesus the Lamb, and the Holy Spirit, the Dove. So we'll listen to Mike play the melody one time, and then we'll join in the second time. Finally, in the same book, number 121, 121.
We'll sing stanzas one and four, and then be led further in worship with the prelude. Buenos dias. Good morning and welcome to all of you who join us on this somewhat summery day. Whether you are here in this space or tuning in or watching. 
Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a day to pay special attention to the gift of God's triune presence in the Creator and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Come, worship in the name of the Creator who creates time and space galaxies and planets. Come, worship in the name of Jesus Christ, born on planet Earth. Come, worship in the name of the Spirit, who fills Earth with God's presence. Come, Creator, Christ, and Comforter. Rule in our hearts, our community, and all creation. Please stand as it suits and turn in your blue hymnal to number 120, Holy, 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 number 120. And in the same book, number 124, 124, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
today, as we come into prayer together, we will pray for several people whose prayer concerns are not listed in the bulletin. The Gunawan family is currently traveling to New York for a week of treatments and then for tests for Caleb, who is a young boy in our congregation um, going through cancer. Arlen Clausen is going to have a heart cath this coming Wednesday. So remember him in prayer. Steve Priest is struggling with pneumonia. And Catherine, the 18-month-old daughter of Carrie and Suman, is in the hospital with dehydration and a virus. We also experienced death in our congregation this week as Leela Suter passed away. Her arrangements are still pending. Let's carry all of these concerns and others to God in prayer together. God, our creator, we come before you today as your grateful children. Jesus, we enter your presence in awe of your surprising love. Holy Spirit, we gather secure in your promise to empower us. You create each of us in your image. We are each unique reflections of your beauty. You hold all of our joy, our hope, our pain. Today, on Father's Day, we are grateful for the way your face is revealed to us and the many men in our church family. And as this week begins, we ask for your special care for Fern and Mark as they anticipate the imminent arrival of their new little one. We are excited to welcome another life into our church family. You call us into vibrant and transformative community. We thank you for the gift of Bible school, for the many lives that were enriched in this last week. We saw your face over and over in the children and all of the youth and adult volunteers. God, you are intimately acquainted with our whole beings. Today, we lift those who struggle physically and emotionally. We pray for your strength and your courage for those who are dealing with all kinds of illnesses. For Don Spillman, Arlen Clausen, Steve Priest, Caleb, and Catherine. We ask for comfort for those who mourn, especially for the family of Leela Suter. For these and other things unnamed, hear our prayers. You are an expansive God. You envelop the whole world in your care. We lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who deal with unrest due to climate change and politics and violence. Today we especially lift to your care the people of Venezuela the families of Rodolfo and Carlos. Holy Trinity, your dance of love invites us into the mysteries of death and life, pain and hope, joy and despair. Ours is the story of victory over death. We inhabit an earth alive with your goodness. Make us sensitive to the groans of creation ready to join in your healing work. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Children, we need your help. The song that we are going to sing as we prepare for worship time is one that many of you know from this last week of Bible school. So kids, come up here and help lead it. Anne Marie's gonna join you here, I think. So children, come on up, and story, uh, the children's story will follow that. This is number 48 in your green Sing the Journey book. You'll notice that there is a leader part with this song. I will sing the leader part, but as we move through the song, and there are six verses, if you feel comfortable, I invite you to join me at any point. But if you do not do the leader part, you will... In, you will Respond on the second and fourth systems with Hallowed Be Thy Name.
Jeffrey and James, you all can come sit up here on the steps with me. And James, you want to come on over here? Put your family on this side, maybe. Um, okay, when you look around, what do you notice? What do you see? You can sit down there if, you, if it's better. What do you see? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Balloons. Okay, what does that usually mean? Birthday. Birthday. Someone's turning three. Um, well, how many of these people do you think look like they're three? We've got an almost three and a not three anymore. <laughs> so uh, this is a little different. This is kind of like what we did in May when we welcomed a couple of other families into our church. Do any of you remember that? Anyone? No? Yes? Maybe? A few of you, it was your family, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So you guys probably remember, don't you? Well, oh, thank you. That's what I was looking for. All right. Thanks, Jaden. This week, we are welcoming the Ramos and Weaver families into our church. So I'm going to talk about this family first. This is Justin. And Justin's 10. And this is Jaden. And Jaden is three. So we do have a three-year-old. And this is their mom, Dixie. So um, when I talk a little bit about these guys, and then in a sec when I talk about these guys, if I say something and you think, hey, same here, me too, raise your hand. That's for everyone. And if I say something and you're like, um, I'm kind of curious about that, I want to know more about that, then wave, okay? So, yeah, hey, me too, or I want to know more about that, okay? All right, so Justin here, his favorite color is red. Anyone? Yeah, I got a few. Okay. He loves to play basketball. Mommy. Yeah, and he'd really love to talk with you about basketball or even better, maybe to play basketball. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Justin's favorite food is oatmeal. And he, yeah, that's my favorite too. Got a couple. Um, in church, he most looks forward to children's time. And Justin's favorite Bible stories are about the building of the temple and about Adam and Eve. We've got a few others who really like those stories. Now, this is Jaden. El color favorito de Jaden es azul. His favorite color is blue. Yeah, got some others. <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, le gusta jugar con carros. He likes to play with cars. Y le gusta los libros sobre dinosaurios. He likes books about dinosaurs, right? Trains. And trains. Got that now, too. Awesome. Sus comidas favoritas son arroz con frijoles y huevos. He likes rice and beans and eggs. Got some. Yeah? <laughs> and la iglesia in the church... Jaden le gusta a jugar en la clase. He likes to play in his Sunday school class. Anyone else like to do that? Got a few others. Yep. <laughs> Good. Justin and Jaden, when I asked them what else they would like their church family to know, what they brought up was something about their mom. They want their church family to know that their mom, Dixie, likes to do hair, and she likes to cook, and she likes to clean. And Dixie said she actually likes to cook and clean and do hair. These are, this is actually what she likes to do. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about James and Andrew. So this is James or Jamie. And Jamie says he truly likes both of those. So you can't go wrong. Call him James or Jamie. He'll be happy. And Jamie is seven. And then this is Andrew. And Andrew, you're going to be three in August, aren't you? So that's kind of coming right up. And their parents are Jeffrey and Anne Marie. Now, Jamie's favorite color is blue. Azul? Mm, color negro. favorito, azul? Negro now. Now it's black. <laughs> Changed. 
<laughs> but your favorite color is still blue, right? Okay. And he loves Pokemon cards. Anyone curious about that or know what that is? You're curious. Yeah. All right. And he would actually really like to talk with you about that. Maybe you can learn a little bit more about what that means. He also likes to play with Hot Wheels, and he builds amazing things with magnetiles. Got magnetiles fans in here? Oh, yeah, over there. Um, Jamie's favorite food is pizza. Me. <laughs> and at church, he likes Sunday school and children's time. Jamie's favorite Bible story is the Christmas story, so the one about Jesus being born. And he really likes the song, I Will Call Upon the Lord, which his family calls the rock song, right? Because of blessed be the rock. Is that why? Yep. And then this is Andrew. Andrew's favorite color is red. Hey, you guys are wearing your favorite colors today. Just notice that. He pretty much likes to do anything with his big brother. And he especially likes to play with tractors and magnetiles. And he loves being in his grandpa's barns and going to the library and the park. Andrew's favorite food is macaroni and cheese. <laughs> he loves to play at church. And um, when he was asked what his favorite Bible story was, I think he said the one about Jesus. I think that's a lot of our favorite Bible stories, the one about Jesus. Yep. He loves the song Over My Head, which we sing a lot at our church, actually, don't we? Yep. <laughs> and when I asked what Andrew's church, um, church family should know about him, Andrew's mom said that it might be good for all of us to know that he's a runner. And that if we see him running, oh, we got some runners here, too. <laughs> if we see him running straight toward a door, that we should maybe stop him and help him wait for a parent. And that is a very good thing for your church family to know about you, I think. So Jamie and Andrew and Justin and Jaden, we are very glad that your families are part of our church family. And you may have noticed that we sing a lot in church. So Daniel, could you bring me those two CDs that are in our bench? We have something for you. This is a Sing the Journey CD. And this has a lot of the songs, a lot of the songs on this are ones that we sing in church. Now, not every song we sing in church is going to be on these CDs because we sing like hundreds of songs in church. But some of them will. And if you listen to this, it might be a little easier to sing along in worship sometimes. Boys, because you are all boys today, aren't you? This is your church family. And we all love you and we all care about you, and we are all very glad that you are part of our church family. And all of us want to help you follow Jesus as you continue to grow in God. We also know that you are going to show us ways to follow Jesus as well. And we are very glad that you are part of this big family of God. We're going to do the circle prayer that we did in May when we did a family welcome. So children, we're going to form this part of the circle, and you all are going to form that part of the circle. So let's stand up. Children, come on up here. And let's kind of form a big circle on the platform. Come on up. Can you come up here? And you don't have to hold hands with each other, but you can. Or you can just extend your arms toward each other. That's fine, too. You guys want to come right here by me, maybe? All right, let's form a big family circle. And let's pray together. God, thank you for the gift of family. Thank you for the gift of these families in our church family. We thank you for this whole congregation and the way that we can love each other and support each other. I pray that as we continue to be family with each other, we will learn to know each other better and that we will support each other and care for each other as we need that. Thank you, God, for your watchful care over all of us. In the name of the Creator and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Now, most of you can get your worship bags and head to your seats, but I want these four boys, Justin and Jaden and Jamie and Andrew 
to head on out and get something, I think you might find that there's a balloon that's your favorite color out there. So while we sing, you can go get the balloon that's your favorite color, and then you can go back to your seat. We're going to sing our song of welcome to Justin, Jaden, Jamie, and Andrew. Number four in your green, sing the journey books. And we're going to sing it today in English and in Spanish. Some of you learned the Spanish words uh, earlier in the songs for gathering, but if you didn't, don't worry because there's only seven words to learn. Uh, so we'll sing verse one in English. And then we'll, you'll see the Spanish words come up on the screen. Bienvenidos a la mesa. And then we'll sing verse 3. Our team leader, Phil Waite, is our preacher today. Please join in a prayer of blessing for Phil. God, you created Phil, you show him the way, and you animate him with your spirit. Speak through him today. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Our scripture this morning is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, the last five verses of the book of Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember... I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. I was uh, walking the mill race last night. I walk a lot. Uh, I have dogs that need lots of walking, that demand lots of walking. And so I was walking. Last night, and I and there was a uh, I heard a, a, a little uh, squawking kind of sound off to my right, and I looked uh, across the race along the bank, and I saw a mother duck with a group of ducklings, and they were 
quickly, uh, paddling, what, 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 what are ducks doing? What, what, is that paddling? What is that? Anyway, they were not flying, and they were, they were quickly sc scooching away in the water, uh, away from the bank. And I looked on the bank, and I saw a raccoon on the bank. Kind of in the shadows, but unmistakable. Raccoons are, have a, kind of an unmistakable appearance. And uh, I surmised, I don't know, I, I surmised that that raccoon was quite interested in one of those little ducklings for dinner. And I think, it's okay, I think the ducklings got away. Everybody can relax for the, for the time being. Also on this walk, uh, I found myself um, slapping myself quite frequently. I don't know if any of you, el any others of you have this problem lately. I've had this problem. I slap myself a lot when I'm walking around outside, especially when there's little wind and it's kind of humid and in the evening. Mosquitoes. They're thick these days, right? We have relationships each one of us, with creation. We interact with creation, and, and, and creation is built on relationships. Stop and think about this. If it were not for relationships, there would be no creation. No creature is a solitary creature. All creatures, each creature... Each species, and internally to species, are dependent on others. Creation is inherently social and interactive. The raccoon depended on the ducks. The ducks depend on whatever is in the, the water um, for their sustenance that they eat. The Ducklings depend on the mother for their safety, all interacting. And if you walk around, you, you, you begin to almost be overwhelmed with the relational nature, the social nature of creation. Now, it, it, it's been said, where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, there's a church conflict, that there is something uh, about relationships that are inherently conflictual. And we, we, we see that in the, in the mosquitoes. It's either um, slap the mosquito and get the mosquito away or have my blood eaten, be eaten by the mosquito, and perhaps have a disease transmitted by, by the mosquito. So there's danger in that relationship, and there's kind of a zero-sum relationship that I have with the mosquito. The mosquito poses a danger to me, and I have an almost existential interest in seeing that mosquito go away. Similar the relationship between the ducks and the raccoon, and whatever the ducks eat in the water, and within species, among species, a kind of zero-sum game. A sense of the limited nature of resources and a battle among people to control resources for life, for safety, for security, for comfort. It is almost as if violence and strife and conflict are built into creation itself. It's difficult to imagine that without violence, creation could exist. That in fact, the social nature of creation itself, the relational nature of creation itself is violent. Now Christians believe something very, very different. We, we know that there are mosquitoes. I don't walk along the mill race and pretend there are no mosquitoes there. I know they're there. I can feel them on my skin, and I know the threat they pose to me. And I slap them, and I swat them off. Um, 
it's, that's dangerous to do. And this doesn't show up on the radio, but I'm kind of slapping myself on the arm. We know that that's true. But we believe that the source of our life, the nature of re the relationships in creation, the social nature of creation, has its ground not in conflict, but in the Holy Trinity. The relational nature of creation itself has its existence, is derived from the Holy Trinity. And the characteristic of the Holy Trinity is peace and harmony and equality and mutual respect and high regard. These are the ancient creeds as Christians reflected on the nature of the Trinity. These are the sorts of things they said about the Trinity, that each one is equal, that, that their relationships among themselves, even though different and distinct, they are one, and th those relationships among the Trinity are marked by love and respect and high regard. So it is that as Christians, we believe that the Creator the Holy Trinity has imbued, has animated all life with this relational social power, this relational social sense that is characterized by peace. To be sure, we still slap mosquitoes. To be sure, there is violence in our world and among creatures and within creatures. We know, we know this. But we believe that being itself, that our destiny as creatures is peace to return to God. Now, the, the Mennonites, the Anabaptists, uh, have been described as a non-creedal people, so that when we speak of the ancient creeds, uh, which describe the, the Trinity, we've often said that they aren't particularly uh, Mennonite or Anabaptist. And that's not quite right. Most Anabaptists uh, held to the creeds, accepted the creeds, but they believed that the proper expression of the creed, the highest expression of the creed, if you will, was as a living text, a living creed. That is, God's people, the church, as a social community, lived out the creed, gave witness to God, confessed God, in their life as a people. The Trinity is articulated in this body. We express the Trinity and we give witness to God in three persons. And I wanna, what I want to suggest this morning is we ha we've had this focus on creation care this year, that creation care, sensitivity and love for creation and love for all creatures is a creedal expression. It's a living creed, an act of love that affirms our belief in the Trinity, that affirms our belief that all creatures and all social interactions among creatures have their ground in God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. My invitation to each one of us 
as individuals, first of all, is to look around. Uh, when you are out and about, when you are driving, especially when you are walking, because when you're walking, you can be much more attentive to things around you than you can if you're in a car or even on a bicycle. When you're, when you're out, pay attention to the relationships around you and reflect on the power of God and the power of the Trinity in your midst. And I want to invite us as God's people, as the church, to reflect. I want to challenge us to think about how we can, as a people, work together to confess the Trinity in our care for creation. So we have several aspects of our corporate life that, that we can name as being parts of creation care. Our solar panels, which are not visible to us, but they're real. Even though we don't see them, we know they're there. And they're on the roof of the Rec Fitness Center. And they are generating clean uh, electricity for our building right here. And that is an expression of creation care, but more importantly, it's an expression of our belief in the Holy Trinity. We have uh, the Casting Hope project. I'm going to do a little test. How many of you know about Casting Hope? All right. Not nearly enough of you know about it. So remember this. We've, um, and I've talked about it before. Casting Hope is a project of College of Mennonite Church. It's a social entrepreneurial project involving uh, food scraps. And the, there's the, the little green buckets uh, that, that I have. In my, I have a little green bucket in my house, and I put my food scraps in there. On, and on Saturday morning, I, I take my bucket, and I put it on the curb, and some dear people come, and they pick it up, and they put the, the food scraps I don't, in some kind of container, and they empty the bucket, and I get it back, and they put some nice paper in there, and it's really it's great. And they take the food scraps, and they feed them to worms, that actual worms that live on this campus, that live on the campus of Goshen College. And those worms do what worms do, and they, they poop. And those, uh, the poop is called castings. Yes, you can say poop in church. It's OK. Castings, and these castings are really good for plants. I, and I don't know anything about gardening. I'm not a gardener. But apparently, they're really good for plants. And uh, soon you will be able to buy these castings in a, in, a, in a bag and you will be able to put them on your plants. Great plant food. But more importantly, I want us to uh, lift that up as an expression, as an articulation of our belief in the Holy Trinity. That piece of creation care. And I want to challenge us to do more, to think about more. What else is there that we're not doing that we can do together? Find three or four people and say, you know, let's do this, or let's do that, or could we do this, or could we do that, or uh, name to other people what's going on. How are you caring for, how are you caring for creation? How are you expressing in your care of creation our, conf our, our confession, our belief in the Holy Trinity? Let's <clears throat> excuse me. Let's respond by turning to number 125 in your blue hymnal of worship book, number 125. <clears throat> this is a song of praise to the Trinity, and we sang it during songs for gathering, but in order to refresh our memories or to get it into your ears, um, we're going to sing it through one time, and then we're going to stop and try 
an exciting experiment with it. So we'll sing it one time first. Now, this song is written so that we can sing it as a canon in five parts, which is a little tricky for us because we have four distinct spaces. So we're going to find a way to create five parts. And so this section will be group one. Middle section, we're going to divide you in half. So this side of the middle section will be group two and this side group three and you can figure out where you are in the center. It doesn't matter because we're all singing the same song in the end. Group four and the balcony will be group five. And here are a few words of explanation. We're going to start by singing it one time through all together and then I'll come down and get all each part started. Each part will sing it two times and when you get to the end of your time, I would like you to repeat the final phrase, and shall be the world without end, and just keep repeating that until I cut us all off. It might take a while. And that is very appropriate for the words, and shall be the world without end. We will end eventually, but hopefully it will be in our hearts and in our ears as we leave this place. So let's try this together. Do not be concerned about all these instructions. If you happen to sing the wrong part, nobody will notice and we'll make a joyful noise. We'll be the mighty voices that talks, are talked about in the book of Revelation.
It's time for our morning offering. So come forward with your offerings, or if you can't come forward, just pass them up with a child who happens to be passing your way. Let's give back to God with thanks. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks that all life has its source in your goodness, in your love, in your beauty. We thank you that you have called us to relate with one another and with your creation in ways that confess to who you are. We return this offering to you as an act of worship, of gratitude, of thanksgiving. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Number 16 in your green Sing the Journey book. Number 16, Praise with Joy the World's Creator. After these words of benediction, you may greet each other in the grace and peace of God and welcome those who are in our midst today. And then we invite all of you to join in a time of fellowship with coffee or heading to Sunday school or both. Hear these words of benediction. The Creator's light lives in you. Christ's love pours out of you. The Spirit's power guides you. Go in peace.